This is a reading from the Holy Spirit through the prophet Isaiah. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out. I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and the hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known along unfamiliar paths. I will give, guide them. I will turn darkness into light before them and make rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. For those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Hear, you deaf, look, you blind, and see. Who is blind but my servant, and deaf like the messenger I send? Who is blind like the one in covenant with me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. It pleased the Lord for the sake of his righteousness to make his law great and glorious. This is the way of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Spirit to the Apostle, the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus as to us. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention when the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord shows us his way of light, bringing us from darkness, from unbelief, and into faith in him. We hear the gospel of the Apostle John, chapter 9, starting at verse 1 and following then, in the following verses of chapter 9. Uh, men, you have a chance here to play the part this week of the one who Jesus is encountering. Ladies, you did last week with the woman at the well. Now, men, we speak also. As Jesus went along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Well, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes, Jesus told him. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. The man replied, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed. Now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth, 
How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We come together as one people in one voice, with many hearts, to confess this faith to which we've been called, as we declare, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day in your presence. Thank you for this time to worship you and now to be fed by you and your word. Speak, O Lord, for your servants listen. And we want to take that word of your good news, of your hope and life to the world, that they might see you in us, in who we are as your people, and declare your wonders. You are good, and you love us so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, friends. Let me draw your attention to the back side of your bulletin. You want to follow along and take some notes today as we continue in this series for us, this Lenten season, finding ourselves at these various crossroads of, of faith and, and life. Uh, let me just review for us where we've been these last few weeks in this uh, early part of the season of Lent. We've joined with those who have found themselves at familiar crossroads to our lives. Jesus, after his baptism, after spending 40 days in the desert, was then tempted by the evil one. Those three familiar temptations Jesus faced victoriously uh, that we face sometimes victoriously and sometimes not in our day. Those crossroads of faith that are the temptations of the evil one, our sin, and the world around us. We know the, we know the final victory is ours in Christ Jesus, and, and we live there. We, we joined Abram, who knelt before the Lord in that obedience of faith, going where the Lord had called him. Go to a place. I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'm not going to give you a GPS tracker so you can find out ahead of time. Just obey and trust and follow, and Abram did. And eventually God would change Abram's name to Abraham as the one who would be the fulfillment of the promises of a land, many, a land, a blessing to many nations, and the offspring of the Messiah would come through Abram's, Abraham's seed. The crossroad of obedience. What do we do there as well? And last week, we joined the woman at the well, the microcosm of the Israelites who were wandering in the wilderness, both of them needing water and encountering that living water of Christ the Lord calling to respond to them at this crossroad of faith. And where do we, what do we do when we face these crossroads of faith? But know the life and the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. We could say that for all of these people, these illustrations for us from these people were meant for our edification. They were meant for us to grow in life and faith as we see the Lord working through them. And we can take note of that. Is that the case for us today? At this crossroad that we come to with the man born blind. I find this crossroad to be particularly challenging for myself. I find it particularly challenging to preach on, to teach on. 
Because this crossroad of faith is a little bit different than the other ones that we've come across. This crossroad of faith was where Jesus was meeting the man born blind. And they asked Jesus, who sinned? Who did something? This man? I? And so often that's the place where we go when we find ourselves at a crossroad of faith and we're dealing with a difficulty in life, physical difficulty, relational, emotional, one of those difficulties of life that doesn't quite make sense of us. What did I do? What did this person do, Lord, to deserve this? What the, what the disciples were asking was, what does this person do to des- in their sin? Now, this is, a, this is a familiar Jewish thought to them. Harmartano is the word there that John the Apostle uses. How did this person, his parents, miss the mark so badly, Lord, that they would be the receptor of this curse, blindness from birth? This was, a, this was a prevalent Jewish thought in that day. They thought, Jews thought of the day, uh, in that day, that, uh, that, that sin, that, uh, the curse of sin, that death, that any kind of disease or disability was a result of something that they had done or somebody else had done. And they thought that God was punishing them or cursing them in this way. Now, we are called out of that mentality. We don't think that way. The, the, the curse of, of sin, the diseases, the disabilities that we deal with has been, have been dealt with in the victory of, of the cross of Jesus. We understand that we live in a broken world today because all of us are in the same boat as sinful human beings. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And all of us are deserving of living in a broken world filled with disease and disabilities and death because we inherit this brokenness from our father Adam and our mother Eve. It's not something that we did. It's who we are as broken sinful people. The Spirit would reinforce this in the New Testament by letting us know that the wages or the curse of of sin is death and all that comes with death, which is disease, disabilities, all the things that afflict us in our humanity. And as the disciples were looking for somebody to blame, Lord, who sinned then? His mom? His dad? Himself? The Spirit would reinforce for us the truth that we just talked about, and that is that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us are to blame before the Lord, for all of the brokenness of God's creation and our humanity. We all fit that slipper. So this encounter that Jesus has, this going along the road and encountering a man born blind, and his disciples ask Jesus, who who sinned here, Lord, rabbi, teacher, they say, his parents or him, that he would be born blind. And Jesus responds with a kingdom answer. This is where it gets a little difficult for us. As the Lord brings us into a divine perspective that surpasses a human explanation and understanding and brings us into a a truth perspective that's bigger than what we're experiencing right now. Jesus would respond but say, Neither this man or his parents sinned, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. That's why. This has happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. His disability the death of our humanity, of our bodies, the diseases we bear, happen so that God's work, the work of God, might be displayed in us. Where we find ourselves at the crossroad of faith right now, in whatever we're bearing, we're carrying, are happening so that the works of God 
might de- be displayed in us. And this is particularly troubling for me because sometimes it seems that those crossroads last for a long time. We're not released to cross the road or take the right or the left, whichever way the Lord is leading to us, but we stay at that crossroad sometimes for a long time, sometimes for our life. Sam knows that. We know that as a family. Sometimes a crossroad, you stay there until the good Lord decides it's time for you to join him in eternity. So that the works of God would be displayed in him. The works of God. What are the works of God? For the blind man, he had the blessing of being healed right then. God chooses to work that way, right? Miraculously, healing. Some of you know that. Some of you experienced the finger of God in a miraculous touch, and you've been healed in a way that only you know that God can provide. Sometimes he allows to move on from that crossroad in a new understanding of his kingdom and and of his ways. The works of God are manied and various. The primary work of God that will be displayed in us is that no matter where we find ourselves, in disease, disability, or death, no matter where we find ourselves, that the primary work of God will be displayed in us, and that is that we know his mercy and his grace. The work of his cross of forgiveness and his empty tomb of new life and hope. That's the primary work of God, whether we find ourselves at a crossroad for the whole, our whole life or just for a little while. The work of God might be displayed in you and in me. That people who see us and know us and encounter us, who come across us on their going down the path, and they meet us, might see the very person of Jesus Christ living out in us and through us at this crossroad, this place where we're at. In other words, we could say that that which the Lord God Almighty does or allows... Sometimes he heals miraculously, and sometimes he allows us to stay at a particular crossroad. What's all meant is to be made known to those for whom it is meant. This is why we go back to to thinking that maybe this crossroad isn't necessarily for our edification, but it's a crossroad that we're allowed to understand the, the mysteries of the divine because others are meant to be edified as the works of God are displayed in you in me. Your, your crossroad, your crossroad of faith and life is meant for those whom God means it to be seen and known. Or we could say it this way, as Jesus said, as long as it's day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. When I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So that the working of God as Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord, the light of the world, would be known in you and me, our crossroads are not always meant for our our edification. But sometimes those crossroads are meant for those for whom the Lord God Almighty intends so they might know the works of God in us, working through us. That's particularly challenging isn't it that's hard for me to say yes lord i will accept that truth through faith in jesus christ as americans as an american i'm used to getting things fixed now the way i want it right I can even get my, bur- my hamburger made that way. We'll make it your way, right? Well, if they can make a hamburger that way, then I want everything else done that way too in this consumeristic perspective in which we live. But God's calling us out of that perspective and saying, trust me. Walk with me. Follow me. Here's your crossroad. Now, let my works be displayed in you not necessarily for your edification, but for all people to see me in you. 
Paul would talk about the works of God to the church in Ephesus. The Spirit would speak to that church as he speaks to us as the body of Christ of how the works of God might be displayed in us at these crossroads in which we find ourselves. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Spirit reminds the church of these truths. He says, His fruit manifested in us is goodness and righteousness and truth. While the manifest salvation of my life for you is known in the ultimate work of my death and resurrection. As you know that as my people of faith, so my goodness and my righteousness and my truth will be known in you as people see me in you. These are my works that are displayed through you at your crossroad. Uh, These sound like very characteristics of God himself, right? And in fact, isn't that what we're called to be? The light of the world, Jesus said. The very person and nature of Jesus Christ who lives in you to the world. The very works of my Father. Hmm. His goodness and righteousness and truth. Which goes on then to be defined in the next idea, the spirit and his truth to us, is that we're called to discover what pleases the Lord. Ah, me being here. At this crossroad, this pleases the Lord. I don't like it or want it. I haven't asked for this. But this is pleasing to the Lord so that his works might be displayed through me. Lord, give me insight. Let me discover with spiritual eyes. Remove the blindness from my heart to understand how this is pleasing to you so that your works can be known in me. And the third truth we're given in Ephesians chapter 5 is then expose rather than engage in the deeds of darkness. Who sinned, Lord? This man or his parents? Are the deeds of darkness. Ah, don't engage in that. Blaming God, others, yourself. Ah, expose the truth. This is done so that the works of God might be displayed. A little bit of a different crossroad we're at today. One that's challenging for us. I find it difficult to understand. I find it difficult to preach on. I find it difficult to live out. And yet, this is where we find ourselves. Lord, at this crossroad of life, let your works be displayed through us. Whatever disease, disability, challenge with death, wherever we find ourselves, Lord, be glorified and honored as your calling in my life. Let people see you through me, your works of salvation in Christ the Lord. Father, this is our prayer. This is the longing of our heart at this particular crossroad we find ourselves at. And when we find ourselves at these crossroads, Lord, Remind us, pull us back to that divine truth. This happened, this is going on in our lives, so that your works might be displayed in us. Your works which, oh Lord, revealed the very character of who you are in us. Father, this work of yours, which is about your truth, that pleases you. You haven't abandoned us, you haven't left us alone, but this is pleasing to you as you're working out your ways in us. That we as your people would expose then this truth of your divine goodness and love that you do work all things out for good as we love you for those who love you lord and we do love you thank you thank you for giving to us this truth leading us in these ways you are good and you're gracious and we know that all the days of our lives in jesus name we praise you and we pray amen